Right folks, this is video number three um, and we're going to be talking about the body this time on how to keep yourself warm, what to wear when you're paddle boarding um, in the winter time. So let's get straight over to that work place. Most people think instantly about wearing wetsuits. So let's have a look at this wetsuit here. This is a 3-2 wetsuit. What does that mean? 3-2 means that parts of the neoprene are going to be three millimetres thick and parts of the neoprene are going to be two millimetres thick. So this is a summer wetsuit and what they typically do is the thinner neoprene will be on the top around the body, under the arms and on the arms to give you that flexibility in your movement and the three mil is going to be down around your midriff in this sort of area and down on the legs where you don't need to move so much. So wetsuits are pretty good to wear in the winter. What sort of things should you look out for? Well first of all front or back zip. I personally like back zip. My, my son would give me lots of stick about that. Um, you can look at the necks here where you might have double lining which might make the neck rub less on your neck whether or not it works I do not know um, and then the actual construction so what we've got here is blind, stu blind stitched and glued so what you effectively have is and this is glued in some areas as well so you'll end up with a blind stitch so the stitch on the near the, ne the neoprene has lots of flex okay the stitching doesn't have so much flex so what they try and do is they'll try and stitch it halfway through and glue the back and that will mean that you're using less um, thread for the stitching and also means that you've got inside a seal like that which is glued so no water can get in and out and you don't want water flushing in and out of your wetsuit so my golden rule for wetsuits is spend a few quid on the wetsuit because what you'll get then is more flex okay now as you go up through the wetsuit so this is a 3-2 this is what I might wear in the winter this is a 5-4 the flex on that this is an O'Neill wetsuit is this is like this will cost you about 140 quid this is um, mid order wetsuit and this is about not probably seven or eight years old I need to upgrade really um, I wear this surfing um, paddle boarding it's not too bad it, it's a bit more restrictive the neoprene under the armpit and on the shoulders isn't too bad but on the body is quite thick so if you get a cheap wetsuit and you go to say Mountain Warehouse or down Trago Mills or out to a filling station, what you'll get is you'll get a lesser quality neoprene which doesn't stretch as much. Now you're going to need a relatively thick neoprene, the thicker the more restrictive they come and therefore on a less quality neoprene it's going to restrict you even more. If we take for example my summer wetsuit, this is a 2 mil. Um, this is a comp wetsuit, 2 to absolute, so a comp means competition. What happens there is the surfers will wear a competition wetsuit, which won't keep you as warm, but is a lot more flexible. So they'll get out and do their competition stint while they're out surfing. They don't need to be kept as warm for as long, but they need maximum flexibility. And on this one, again, you've got it stitched on the outside, blind stitched, and glued on the inside. So again, nothing's going to get through, but the flex in that look is boom, it, you know, ridiculous amount of flex. These are great for paddle boarding in the summer if you do want to dip. Um, and, and the other benefit, of course, is the more flex, you can wear a wetsuit that is a little bit tighter and it'll, it'll flex around you more and hug your body better. You don't get flushing through of water. And actually, if you've got kids, spending more money on a more flexible wetsuit pays dividends because the wetsuit will grip and fit them right now, today, and it will last them for probably maybe one or two years, so next season and maybe the one after. Whereas if you buy a wetsuit that's um, not got the flex, it won't fit them for as long. Or you might end up buying more, spending uh, buying a bigger wetsuit because you think, oh, they'll grow into it. That's no good. They'll be cold while the wetsuit doesn't fit them properly. So my recommendation is spend more money, bizarrely, on a better quality neoprene wetsuit. It'll fit you better. And for paddle boarding in particular, around the under the arms on the shoulders on the arms everything where you need to move you've got that flexibility even on a tight fitting wetsuit whereas if you spend less you end up looking like the tin man from wizard of oz because you can't move and the whole thing becomes restrictive okay people say well we can't all afford that i know that but there comes a point, folks, where you've got to be looking at functionality and quality and spending a bit more will get you something that will last longer, fit you better, and you'll enjoy the experience. But there's another thought. 
What a, do I really want to put a wetsuit on in the winter? Well, I don't always want to put a wetsuit on in the winter. So what I do is I'll wear this. You might have seen me in some of my videos wearing this. This is a CAG, which is effectively, um, my nan used to call them Kagos, believe it or not, Kagos. It's a CAG. It is for, um, for um, kayaking, canoeing, stuff like that. This is a Palm CAG, made by this company called Palm. These cost about 70 odd quid. It's got a handy um, uh, pocket on the front. It's going to keep most of the water out. You've got on the on the um, waist a neoprene um, waist there and you can tighten it up and water basically will not get in there and then you've got the same gubbins on the cuff and also on the collar that is actually the collar right there so what you can do is you can put sweatshirts on t-shirts you can layer up chuck that on over the top and if you do fall in the drink you know that everything underneath that isn't really going to get wet. It might get a little bit wet around the waist, possibly, but basically your body's going to remain dry. So what do you put on your legs? So then what I've got here is this is by Gull. And Gull, I would say, are a middle-order brand. This is a three mil. I mean, the flex on this isn't brilliant. And I don't think I would necessarily wear a wetsuit by Gull, but this is... Um, this is for my legs. don't have to worry too much about moving my legs. This, These here are, um, again... You can tighten the waist up, get them nice and tight on the waist because um, with a wetsuit, it's normally the whole body is keeping them up and keeping them tight. So you need something that's going to be tight. You can tighten these dull um, leggings off around the waist. And these are called, I don't know what they're called. They're called, well, they call them flex techs. I don't know what that means, to be honest. They've got little drainage holes at the bottom down there. They need a bit of a clean these drainage holes on the bottom to let water out. Always make sure you put these over the top of any boots. So pull them up, then put your boots on, then put these over the top so that the water will drain out and go over your boots. Don't put them inside your boots because else you'll fill up and you'll be like Michelin Man. Not quite, but you know what I mean. So make sure they always go over the top of your boots at the end. But what the beauty of all of this is, I can chuck this on at home, leave all my sweatshirts and all that sort of gubbins on, chuck that on, just jump in the car and go. And what will happen is only the bottom bit of me um, legs will get wet. So I, you know, I might just change me, um, I could change me trousers and chuck some underpants on when I get home, change me um, shoes. But basically all my top half, I haven't got to get changed out of that. So these things here, 70 odd quid for them. These here things here are going to cost you 40, 50 quid maybe. A decent wetsuit, um, realistically, you're looking at 250 quid for a decent um, winter wet so you could perhaps get something like a, an O'Neill Epic um, the, probably the newer ones are better than this might cost you about 140 when you get into the summertime you can get some cheap wetsuits for and you can get some quite decent flexible wetsuits for about 70 or 80 quid um, or one of these is going to cost you about 170 but again all right it's a lot of money but the amount of use you get out of it and the feeling of wearing these, it's, they, are, they are absolutely brilliant. You pay what you get for in the wetsuit world. I'd recommend shopping around for wetsuits on wetsuit websites, so wetsuit outlet, people like that who specialise in wetsuits. Look for brands like Rip Curl, Billabong, O'Neill, XL. The list goes on and on, but proper recognised brands do really good um, wetsuits. So there you go, folks. Wetsuits. Are pretty good um, if you want to go in so bear in mind sometimes you go in conditions where you know it's going to be choppy you know you're going to end up in the drink in that situation I'll wear a thick wetsuit if I'm going out where I'm thinking well do you know I'm not going to intend on falling in it's a little bit of chop I can get on my knees if it gets choppy or I'm not not really intending on going in then this year is a good option but I've always always got the safety if I do fall in the drink upper body is going to be warm lower half is going to be protected by a wetsuit by neoprene so there you go folks that is the body of my wetsuit for paddleboarding in the winter catch you guys on the next paddleboarding schmaddleboarding flips on now like and subscribe if you can um i hope you found this of use comment please comment and interact folks catch you soon <laughs>